My name is Tanish and I'm a what we my Synthetic Economist. Um, one of the queries I have for the panel, and, and this is getting a little bit into the political zone, you've all taken as gospel that we need to modify or amend the Reserve Bank Act, and in particular the Policy Targets Agreement. By implication, you're all assuming that inflation targeting is required. And you're all assuming that the Reserve Bank Act needs to be responsible, the Reserve Bank is the appropriate authority to do that. And I'm just wondering, because I can remember when we brought that act in, that, is, that my mentor was talking about, yes, you'll hit and the inflation target, you'll screw the export sector. That was 20 years ago, more than that. Do we actually need a reserve bank act, or do we actually need, and it's part of, I think, is what Chris was going on, do we actually need to put economic policy back in the hands of the politicians rather than in the hands of some independent, uh, nominally accountable authority? Because then what we're getting is, we're getting the, the politicians have got an idea of, are able to wash their hands of the consequences. It's not their fault because we've got the, it's all the Reserve Bank's fault for not bringing the exchange rate down and not doing the interest rate. Because we've modified the Reserve Bank Act and the policy targets agreement many, many times. It's made absolutely no difference. So why will it make any difference this time if we just throw in um, a current account target or a jobs target? Will it actually make any difference to their behaviour? Who? Who must do that one? No one. It's good to get up and do the answer then. Okay, I don't want to sound conservative, but um, that's probably a step too far for me just yet. But the logic of having to control fiscal policy and monetary policy under a single body is it's just there. Because right now we've got the situation where the Reserve Bank says all the problems with our economy are caused over there in the fiscal. And you go over to the fiscal side and they say, well, it's all over there, it's not us. So who is responsible is, a, is the problem. So yeah i i understand the question i'm just i'm not qualified to jump to the end conclusion it's probably a step too far at this point but i i do believe a current account target would drive different behavior from the reserve bank so if we're targeting the current account we have to look at the balance of payments we have to look at the performance of the real economy rather than simply ignore it because inflation's okay. And the other changes are explicit use of macro, macro prudential tools as an inflation response rather than a financial stability response. And I've heard answers in both directions that it's possible today or it's not possible today. But it needs to get sorted out so it explicitly is possible. Well, I'm up for a debate about anything that's going to help, basically. I mean, I think this is a time when you have to put up options and you have to be able to argue the opportunities it creates and the risks it creates, be that about inflation or anything else, Ganesh. So I think we have to go back to basics here and say, you know, what is the relationship between the government and the, and the economy as a whole and what are the interventions, what are the levers? And, you know, we've got a bit of different politics in Canterbury, haven't we, at the moment, for obvious reasons. Uh, so some of that logic could be applied in this space as well. So whether it's a step too far or not, I just think the argument needs to be made more strongly. Inflation still matters in the long run, but today it isn't the issue. <laughs>